Yo, what's good, YouTube? This is Jay from TNJ, and welcome back to the New Orleans Kings franchise. Six games left, and here we are. One and a half games back, actually. We advanced today, and the Twins got another win. They are on a three-game win streak. We need them to lose. So here we are playing the Oakland Athletics. First, Blake Snell versus Alex Wood. We will sim this game because I fully expected us to win that game, and we didn't. We lost 6-5. to five. All right, next game up. Another athletic game. But we get this one, 3-2. to two. I mean, these games down the stretch are just close. And here we are. I don't trust Tyler Glass now. Let's just be honest. He's 8-15 and 15 on the season. But now look at this. The Twins keep winning. Five straight wins. They are now two and a half games ahead of us. And here we are at 90 and 68. I would be devastated if we won 90 plus games and did not make the playoffs. That would be insane. So here is Tyler Glass now. We are going to play this one because I do not trust this guy. 585 ERA, 168 whip. I mean, just giving up so many hits. He's got 30 starts under his belt. I mean, with the number one offense, I can't believe he's struggling the way he is. So here we go on the road, and here is Yanni Hernandez who leads us off. And remember, he's playing short a little bit because Jeremy Pena was hurt earlier in the season, and he is pretty much done for the regular season. If we make the playoffs, he will be back for the playoffs. So that brings up Nate Barron hitting in the two spot and having himself a pretty good rookie season. A high throw, but that one is going to be on the line. So now they have two outs. And here is Carlos Santana, who's dropped an average a little bit to 328. But that one will get his average right back up. And that one is going to be a hit down the right field line. He's got 23 speed, and he slides in, and he is safe. So a two-out double here for Santana, and that, and that average comes right back up. And that brings up Jake Cave, who is a top five leader in average in the AL as well. And he goes to the right field, and that one will just be a pop-up. And that one will get the Athletics out of the first inning as you move on to the bottom of the first now. And here is Lariano leading it off for the Oakland Athletics. And he will start out with the hit. So now a man on first base. Glass now, please do not struggle in this one. Ground ball up the middle, flip to second, flip to first, double play, there we go. So now two outs in this inning, that brings up Matt Chapman, who's pretty much give us, given us fits so far in this series, and Glass now walks him. As that brings up Max Kepler now, playing for the Athletics, hitting in the four hole. He hits one hard, up the middle, that one gets through, and now guys on first and second now, Two outs, one, two count. Jason Hayward at the plate, and he hits just a ground ball to short, and Yanni gets up and throws. And it's a long throw to short first, and it's going to be an out. And we do get out of that inning, though, as we move on to the top of the third. Now, here is Yanni at the plate. He watches one on the outside part of the plate, and now that brings up Nate Barron hitting in the two hole, and let's see if he can come up come through three two count one out we do send both runners and this one's driven deep to left field and the left fielder runs back to the track and he's under that one i knew that one one wasn't gone because the left fielder was kind of lollygagging to the ball and now that brings up carlos santana who hits one hard on the left field line and it's just a ground ball out and the athletics get out of that inning and they do end up taking the lead as we move on to the fourth inning and here's Glass now, in a little bit of trouble, man on second base. And we do get the fly ball to left field. So now with two outs, let's see if Glass now can get out of this one. Chad Pinder at the plate now with Jason Hayward at second. And he hits one to the right side. And that one is right to Barron at second. And we will get the out. So now we move on to the fifth inning. Still a one-run game. Here is David Bodie at the plate. And he watches one low. And here we go. Now, this could be our chance. A man on first base with David Bodie struggling. That brings up Corey Lee, who is one for one in this game. But it's a, just a really easy ground ball right to short. And it's a Taylor May double play. And now with two outs, let's see if Justin Thompson, Thompson can come through hitting in the nine spot. And it's just an easy ground ball to third. Throwing the first three outs here in the fifth. So now we move on to the later parts of this game. 
Now it's a 2-0 lead. And here's Jesus Aguilar at the plate. And he watches one low in the zone. And that one is uh, Lazardo, his fourth strikeout of the game. Make it five. David Bodie comes up next. And he swings and misses. That one was out of the zone. It's now with two outs. That brings up Corey Lee, who's already hit into a double play this game. He drives one deep to left field. And it looks like this one's deep. And it's going to be off of the track and off the wall. And let's see. We will send the runner all the way from first base. And it's going to be safe. There we go. Brantley does score on that one. And now it's 2-1 to one in the seventh inning. As I'm surprised, but they do go to their bullpen and they bring in Pettit. And he is 5-3. and three. He's appeared in 70 innings this season. He's one of their top relievers out of the pen. And here comes Thompson. He hits one to the left side. It's just a ground ball. And now here we are with a 2-1 to one deficit as we go to our bullpen and bring in Ryan Stanek here to bring us through the end of this game. He has been the most reliable bullpen guy that we have. And here he gets out of this one in the seventh. Pop up in the infield, Carlos Santana takes it away from Stanek. So now we move on to the eighth inning now. Here is Nate Barron at the plate. Hit and run situation. We do send the runner from first. And it is going to be safe that time. And that was Yanni Hernandez who swiped that bag. And that one will get us a strike three, throw him out type of play, but we're safe at second. And now here comes Carlos Santana who swings that one low. Man, that's a strike three. And now Jake Cave, can he come through for us? 0 for three in this game. And he drives it right up the middle. That was a perfect line drive. And that one does get us a two to two game here. But Cave does round first, a little too hard on that one and gets thrown out at first base, being a little too aggressive. It looked like we tr could make it to second, but I kind of hesitated as we move on to the ninth inning. Here is Tony Kemp, and he hits one to second base with two outs, and that one will bring us to extras. Who would have thought down the stretch there would be some extra inning games? I mean, that's how it always goes. So here in extras, here in the bottom of the 10th inning, here with one out, Oakland does start out with the hit. And now that brings up the top of the lineup here with Tommy Edmond hitting in the two hole. And he does watch that one go right across the middle of the plate. I'm not sure what he was looking at. And now that brings up Matt Chapman here with two outs who hits one hard up the middle. And that one does get through. So now guys on first and second, here's the four hole hitter up. And I believe it's Max Kepler. Yes, it is. Two for four in this game. Stanek gets him two ground out. Okay. There we go. We get out of a little bit of jam, and that one will end Stanek's day with 50 pitches. I'm not going to pitch him beyond that, especially out of the bullpen. As that brings up Carlos Santana here in the top of the 11th. He drives one deep, and it does sneak over the wall. That's a home run. His 35th of the season, Carlos Santana comes through. And wow, 386. I did not think that was getting over. I would at least thought that was going to bounce off the wall. But that continues the inning as here's Jake Cave. And he does get a hit up the middle. And with no outs, we can add some more insurance with this 3-2 lead in extras. So now with two outs, the next two batters can't do anything as that brings up David Bodie. And he misses a fastball right over the middle. So now we move on to the bottom of the 11th inning. And that brings up Orlando Reyes. Who remember, we just acquired him in trade, but I really like his stuff. So that brings up the first batter who hits a deep fly ball to center field. And that is going to be run down by Thompson. So one out here in this inning. Seth Brown at the plate, hitting in the six hole. He drives one deep, another deep shot. And that one does ricochet off the wall. And it's going to be thrown in by Jake Cave, and he gets it in. But it's going to be a double here with one out. So they could potentially walk it off here or even tie the game up. But here comes Chad Pinder. He swinging and missing at outside slider. That's definitely what we needed. And now with two outs, Tony Kemp at the plate. He hits one deep to center field, but Justin Thompson has that elite reaction and great fielding ability. He runs it down and we do get the victory here. Winning two out of three versus Oakland and now versus Texas to, win, to uh, end this season. Let's see if we can get it done here down the stretch. But there's an issue. The Twins just keep winning. Five games, they're 93 and 66. 
we just need to get this going and keep it going and now we end up with some more bad news david bodie another season ending injury to our infield he's gonna be done for one to two months but we have a bigger task at hand we got to keep going we win the first one versus texas seven to five and now we win the second one five to three so we have now won 12 of the last 14 games but it doesn't matter the twins end the season winning seven straight games you've got to be kidding me eight and two in the last ten seven straight and that eliminates us from the playoffs incredible run by the twins and we beat them a couple of times in the month of august and look at this this great ending to this season winning 13 of the last 15 games goes to waste and one of those wins was five to six to oakland and a bad horrible loss to texas 12 to 1 but if it wasn't for those two games 15 and 0 it would have been 16 and 0 actually to end the season but the twins just get hot they we even beat them two out of the three in august and instead they end our season and go seven straight just incredible and that's how this season ends tragic heartbreaking a 94 win team misses the playoffs it happens once in a while and it happened here with the kings and that sucks because we wasted a magical run at the end of that season so surprisingly the angels won a ton of games in the al west and they came away with the west crown but looking at the other leagues i mean we would have been in a lot of these divisions we would have won the nl west more than likely 88 wins we would have won the nl wild card no doubt here we probably would have won the east we are what do we just have 94 wins i guess we wouldn't have won the east we would have been in second but still pretty good from us but look at this al central they had a 95 a 97 and a 101 win team that is just insane and that's what ended us i mean three teams from that al central ended up making the playoffs so now with our season coming to an end let's just look at the awards around the league jd martinez comes home with the mvp but carlos santana wins the batting title he ended up with a 332 average and actually finished a little above rendon who finished with 325 but rendon goes to the playoffs i'd rather take that than the al batting title and then Kur Kuriloff, is that how you say it? Kuriloff, he ends up winning the AL Rookie of the Year. He hit only 244, though. But like I said, I don't know what's up with the show, but they do favor home runs. He hit a lot of home runs for a rookie, so he will get the Rookie of the Year. But do we have any Gold Glove winners? And honestly, I don't think we would because the only guy that I would think that would get close to winning a Gold Glove would maybe be Corey Lee behind the plate, but he doesn't play there full time. He sometimes DHs. And then maybe Jeremy Pena, but he did not finish the season at shortstop. He's probably our best fielder on our roster altogether. And he was hurt, so he didn't win it. Now, Silver Slugger. I want to know how Jake Cave or Carlos Santana didn't win any of those awards. Neither. Both top five in average. And they did not win any Silver Slugger award. That is just very, very disappointing. I don't know if they'll fix this in the show, but it's definitely something that's annoying and something that I wish they would fix. But then Luis Castillo takes home the NL MVP, and he had a great season. He's going to be closing out 99 overall pretty soon. So now we recap this season. And honestly, this is sad because I don't know what we're going to do. Carlos Santana was the AL batting champ. He made $10 million last season. We traded for him. And I thought this would be a one-year rental. But honestly, I can't let him go. I can't. I, I don't think I'm going to let him go in free agency because, I mean, look at him. He is as dominant as you can get. AL bat batting champ, 37 home runs. How was he not in the running for the MVP? That's just insane. 
Jesus Aguilar hit pretty well. Brantley hit 288. A little bit of dip that I thought he would have. That's like the second time that's happened for us where we acquire somebody and they end up hitting lower than what they would have hit with their previous team. Remember when Marcus Simeon, he was hitting 300 consistently. He got to us and hit 285. Jay Cave, though, was a surprise of the season. We rewarded him with a contract extension. He finished with a 325 average. That's just insane. And then look at that, Rommel Tapia. He was a big surprise this year as well. He's still 28 years old. Great arm, great speed. He is pretty well too. I mean, the guy can hit well. 295 last season, or 295 this season, I should say. 310 last season. Pretty consistent from a guy that we don't even consider our everyday center fielder. Now, Corey Lee will have that steady improvement. I love what he did this year, 276. And he, you know, didn't have a spike in numbers as far as hits or doubles or home runs or anything like that go. He actually hit seven less home runs. But at the same time, he hit way better. Like, he was just situationally really good. And I am looking forward to moving him up in the lineup, maybe to that two spot and eventually putting him in that three spot. I think he's gonna be that versatile to be one of our best hitters on the team. Now, Justin Thompson will improve. I expect a second year leap from him in his rookie year, because just like Corey Lee got better, I think that Thompson will also get better. Jeremy Pena, I'm hoping that he can keep it up. Remember, I did not have high hopes for him here this season, but he surprised me. Hit 300 for most of the year, and then that dipped down a little bit to 285. Then he got hurt and it kind of ruined his season, but I think he had a very productive season. Now, backup catcher is definitely a position that I don't know about. Reese McGuire is a guy that we acquired. He's got some trade value as well. We obviously might want to explore that in the offseason. I don't really know right now, but catcher is definitely a position I'm looking at, keeping an eye on. Nate Barron hit pretty well. He didn't have a lot of bad bats. I didn't expect him to be a full-time starter right away. Maybe he's a guy we could just groom there, but he is going into age 27, and we will need to probably play him through his prime, and I think he'll just get better. He had a really good season. Now, one guy I'm looking to bring back is Scooter Jeanette. I did not think I would be in this position to want to bring back Scooter Jeanette, but I just want to look at his stats. I mean, he has improved each season. He hit 220 year one, 240 year two, and now in year three, he hit 281 off the bench. I mean, that is production. You don't want to lose that, especially with having the number one offense in the uh, MLB. I think he did quite well. Now, Billy Hamilton is going to walk. I'm not going to bring him back. If I do, it'll be simply because of base running. He will not play pretty much at all. Tim Beckham, when I brought him up, he hit pretty well. I still like Beckham. Hopefully he doesn't retire. I like him for depth. But let's just move over to pitching. And this is where we have to get better, I think. This is where we were inconsistent. I think our offense was pretty good, but our uh, pitching really could have helped us out a little bit. Alex Wood had a good, se good season again. He's going into the third year of his final final year of his contract on a three-year deal next season. So we won't, will want to get the best out of him. He had 14 wins. Forrest Whitley actually led us in wins. That's surprising, seeing that his whip was so high. Pablo Lopez had a good year. I'm still waiting for him to really have that big ace year where he has like maybe 18 wins and he has around a one whip. I'm really looking forward to that. I don't know if he has it in him, but he's got an affordable contract, so I still like that right now. But Teddy Palatitis is a guy that I could see as a future, maybe even number two in our rotation. He had 11 wins and had a pretty good whip for his first year as a rookie. Now, Ryan Stanek, I kind of ran him into the ground a little bit, but he thrived. He went 9-1. and one. The wins don't really matter out of the bullpen, but had an average whip, I would say. He didn't do great. He didn't do bad either, but he did good for us in spots. Now, Tyler Glass now. <sighs> Where do I start with this guy? I mean, we acquired him. He was just okay. But then in year two, he got worse. And what's funny is that in the postseason last year, he was great. I mean, I can't figure this guy out. Now, he will be a free agent probably next season. I will need to see what we want to do with him. And honestly, you know, do we want to extend him? Do we sign him and then trade him? Because like I said, he's going to be a free agent. We need to figure out what we're going to do with him. I don't really have a definitive answer, 
I guess I'll have to think about it when going into the offseason. Now, Luke O'Connor was a very good relief pitcher for us for the last two seasons. And honestly, I think I'm going to give him a little bit more of a potential boost. He's been stuck on 69 overall, and I have no idea why, to be honest, because he's been doing decent. And he's a guy that was an original guy on the, in the organization to start. He was one of your guys' custom prospects. And he ended up making the MLB team, and he honestly pitched well enough to keep his spot. So even though he's 69 overall, I don't see any reason to move him down. Now, Brand Hand had probably one of his best years of his career. He recovered quite nicely. He definitely started out slow with us. But I like his potential with the team. He still signed for the next two years after this one. So who do we have to look forward to in the offseason and into next season? Jimmy Pelko. I gave him two years in the minors. It's his turn. I did the same thing with Teddy Palatitis, and I kind of moved up Palatitis because he's older. But now Jimmy Pelko is going to be age 20. I think he's ready. Geraldo Herrera, I think I'm going to give him two more seasons down in the minors before even thinking about moving him up. But we'll see. The playoffs look like this, and I am very disappointed. I thought we were going to make that run, that magical run, at an AL wildcard spot, but it just didn't work out. We'll see how it goes in the offseason. I definitely want to add somebody on the pitching staff that I can throw some money at. I don't have anybody making a ton of money right now, so that's really my goal, and to just get some consistent guys. We need the consistency. So hit subscribe, hit that like button, stay tuned. Let's get it. Let's go. I be trying to do me, but they be trying to copy though. Only problem with that is they not me though. People act cool, but really they be shifty though. They say they got your back, but they ain't even behind me though. I be low key, but police be trying to find me.